the Egyptian pyramid in any list of strange and unusual artifacts one of the first things that comes to mind is, of course, the Great Pyramid in Egypt. The pyramid has been the source of endless theories, ideas, rumors and speculation. Amazing powers have even been attributed to it. Though many theories have been put forward as to how the pyramid was built, under scrutiny, none presented so far have proved able to be adequate. It has been theorized to have been built to serve as everything from a tomb, to an initiation chamber, to a cosmic beacon, to a giant water pump and many other things besides. Endless books have been written on it and endless theories argued. Indeed the entire Giza Valley complex is quite remarkable and there are many mysteries surrounding the entire necropolis. Its uses and construction. The complex is in fact, so remarkable that an entire chapter is dedicated to it later in this work. See Chapter 4, Valley of Kings. Aztec Earplugs The Aztec culture, as with many other past cultures of the Mesoamerican region had a love for obsidian. It was used mainly for objects of a sacrificial or ritualistic nature and is a reasonably common find at many South American sites. In case you're unfamiliar with it, obsidian is a very brittle, black volcanic glass and is quite difficult to carve or work with. However, sometime during the past an unknown Aztec craftsman is believed to have made these wonderful and rather unusual little items fig, which are thought to be earplugs. Yes that right, earplugs, and we are asked to believe that they were made by using the typical Aztec tools of the time, such as bamboo drills, stone chisels and fine sand as an abrasive agent. This can only be seen as an incredibly unfathomable conclusion, because these items are polished to a constant thickness of less than one millimeter throughout, they are perfectly circular, completely symmetrical and are both exactly the same size. Now just think about that for a moment and remember that we're talking about earplugs here. These things really are, very small, as I'm sure you will realize if you consider the size of an actual ear fine veil, plus they have been made to an incredible degree of precision from obsidian, just notice the accuracy of the small flanges protruding from the ends of the items. It is very difficult to imagine someone making these from brittle obsidian by using primitive hand tools. Fig. However the most fascinating and interesting thing about these artifacts is that under close scrutiny the unmistakable signs of machining are actually quite clearly visible on the surfaces making the idea that they were handmade even more difficult to deal with. The Mysterious Metal Vase In June, 1851, Scientific American reprinted a report that had first appeared in the Boston Transcript about a metallic vase that had been discovered by miners Fig. The vase was bound into parts among rubble that had been dynamited out of solid sedimentary rock in Dorchester, Mass. The strange thing though, is that it came from about 15 feet below the surface and was deeply embedded inside the rock. This indicates it had been there for an extremely long time. The bell-shaped vase measures four and one-half inches high and six and one-half inches at its base and consists of a zinc and silver alloy while the sides are decorated with designs of flowers and bouquet arrangements, all inlaid with pure silver. The rock out of which the vase came from came is estimated at about 100,000 years old. How did this vase come to be solidly embedded within 15 feet of solid sedimentary rock? Taking the idea that they were handmade even more difficult to deal with. The lost necklace It is a known fact that coal is formed over thousands of years from fallen timber that has been charred and undergone immense pressure for many years beneath many tons of earth. The lump of coal therefore, by the simple nature of its own creation is very ancient stuff. There is quite literally, no such thing as new coal. Yet one morning in June of 1891, the Mrs. S. W. Colt of Morrisonville, Illinois was fragmenting coal into smaller pieces for her kitchen stove when she noticed that one of the lumps she had broken apart had a chained necklace stuck in it. The chain measured about 10 inches long and was later found to be made of a carat gold. Unfortunately no photograph exists of the necklace and its whereabouts is presently unknown, however, the actual event is quite well documented. 
as accounted by the Morrisonville Times of June 11, 1891, investigators concluded that the chain, which was described as being of antique and quaint workmanship had not simply been accidentally dropped in with the coal by a worker, since an examination of the item clearly displayed some hard fragments of the coal that still clung onto the links of the chain, while the part of the coal that had broken apart also still bore the distinct impression of where the chain had been encased in it. The reporter of the day described it in this way. Mrs. Colt thought the chain had been dropped accidentally in the coal, but as she undertook to lift the chain up, the idea of its having been recently dropped was shown to be fallacious, for as the lump of coal broke, it separated almost in the middle, and the circular position of the chain placed the two ends near to each other. And as the lumps separated, the middle of the chain became loosened while each end remained fastened to the coal. How did a finely wrought gold chain come to be firmly encased in a lump of coal, an object that's very existence requires it to be many thousands of years old? Obviously the chain wasn't lost too recently. The Puma Punka stones There is a most interesting thing that can be found in the Puma Punka complex near the Ibanaco. At the ancient site, standing upright in the courtyard, there can be found a tall flat stone that has a striking feature on it. The entire complex is actually quite remarkable, featuring a huge doorway complete with lintels that has been cut from a single stone and many other ob shapes that appear to have been machined including this one fig. The remarkable thing about this ancient slab is that it has a perfect cut or groove approximately 1 cm wide running down its entire length while inside the groove there is a set of equidistant holes that appear to have been drilled into it. The site is only a few hundred meters from the famous site of Tiawanako but the stone slab and many other enigmatic features of the site are so hard to explain and pose so many difficult questions that the entire site is virtually hushed up by the entire archaeological community. And almost never mentioned to tourists. The consistent accuracy of the group and the holes within it cannot possibly have been achieved with any known types of hand tools. It would appear that the only satisfactory explanation is that it was done by a machine or possibly by molding. The Nazca lines in continuing our display of the parts mentioned must of course be given to the enormous motifs, spirals and geometric shapes that appear on the Nazca plains in Peru. There really are few places on earth more baffling or shrouded in mystery. The actual Nazca civilization was one that had flourished in the area from between 200 B and 600 A. But no one really knows the true origins or meaning of the enormous and very mysterious Nazca lines. The lines appear etched into a vast plateau, 37 miles long and 15 miles wide called Pampa Colorado that sits high in the mountains of the Nazca region of Peru. The lines were probably first brought to the wider attention of the world by Eric von Anakin in his book The Chariots of the Gods. The etchings are of truly monumental proportions with the plain containing literally thousands of crisscrossing, zigzagging, spiraling and parallel lines covering virtually the entire plateau. The lines have been made by simply removing the hard rocky surface of the plain and exposing the lighter soil beneath. They range in average width from 6 inches to over 6 feet and run in absolutely every direction across the plain. Some of the lines are over 6 miles long and yet they still run unbroken over plains, hills and valleys and always remain perfectly straight and true. The motifs they depict include bird, animal and human forms, astronomically symbols and interestingly, even one section that seems to look exactly like an enormous long runway fig. The truly gigantic size of these glyphs that are depicted at Nazca also means that none of them at all are visible to a person standing on the ground and only the person viewing them from the air can see that they actually form shapes and pictures. The Nazca lines were only discovered accidentally when a plane flew over the site in the mid-20th century and the surprised pilot suddenly noticed them from the air. From the vantage point of the sky, however, there can be clearly seen the huge shapes of a monkey fig. Zero, the hummingbird fig. One and one that really does look like an astronaut fig. Two, and that's just a few. There are many, many more, covering virtually the entire plateau fig. 
The enormous size of these pictograms really and truly cannot be understated and it is widely believed that the design blueprint for the Nazca site could only properly have been realized from the air. How else would the artist ever know if the design was correct? It also seems strange that anyone would go to all the trouble of covering the mountain plateau in huge pictograms that no one who couldn't fly would ever possibly be able to view in the first place, there is simply no apparent point to such an exercise. The ICA stones undoubtedly a number one of the greatest enigmas of the archaeological world surrounds a collection of some 15,000 artifacts that were found in Peru in 1960. Similar in many ways to the Nazca lines, I refer to a collection of glyphs carved onto stones that collectively form a veritable rock library now known as the ICA stones. The unusual scenes depicted in detailed carvings on the stones appear to be from the pre-Columbian era and the sheer volume of them is astonishing. But there is also a rather intriguing story that surrounds these enigmatic carved stones. The stones were supposedly found in a cave by a native farmer at a place called ICA, about 300 km from Lima. The farmer claimed to have found piles of them in various caves and gorges in the area, some scattered about the ground and some slightly buried beneath the surface. At first the farmer had only a few bags of carved stones but then later returned with literally thousands of the artifacts and for some time made a comfortable living for himself selling the stones to tourists at a market stall. Before long the farmer had become something of a local celebrity and word of his find began to circle in the archaeological community and many experts began to descend on the area to investigate the validity of the stones. Naturally the sudden attention quickly aroused the interest of the Peruvian government who Fearing Peru would become another Egypt and soon be overrun with diggers and robbers, promptly arrested the farmer to investigate his claims for themselves. It is unclear what was said to the farmer during his confinement but upon his release he suddenly stated in writing that the entire collection of stones was a hoax and that he had carved the stones himself in order to trick the tourists and make some easy money. He had just never realized it would get so out of hand. But there's much more to the story than that. In 1966 the town's local physician drive. Javier Cabrera received one of the stones from a native as a birthday present. The doctor, who had heard of the farmer's novelties, noticed that the stone certainly looked ancient but what had really intrigued him was the fact that it appeared to accurately depict a type of prehistoric fish fig. For the actual farmer in question was wholly uneducated, unable even to read. So how then, puzzled the doctor. Could such a man possibly possess enough knowledge of paleontology to be able to produce an accurate and anatomically correct carving of an extinct sea creature?